This screencast is to help you with Module 2, Lesson 28 Homework. I'm not going to give you the answers, but I'm going to give you some guidance by means of tape diagrams to help you solve these problems in case you're frustrated. The first problem, Mr. Rice needs to replace 166 and 25 hundredths feet of edging on the flower beds in his backyard. The edging is sold in lengths of 19 feet each. How many lengths of edging will Mr. Rice need to purchase? Well, you need to keep in mind that they only sell lengths of 19 feet. <clears throat> so I can't buy a fraction of that. So when you get your answer, you're going to have a decimal, and you need to think about how many of these 19-foot sections does he need to buy. It's a pretty straightforward one-step problem, but you do have to do a little bit of thinking when you're done. Problem two uh, is a little bit more complicated, so let's go over it. We'll first start reading it and start laying out some tape diagrams. Olivia is making granola bars. She will use 17 and 9 tenths ounces of pistachios, 12 and 6 tenths ounces of almonds, 12 and 5 tenths ounces of walnuts, and 12 and 5 tenths ounces of cashews. This amount will make 25 bars. How many ounces of nuts are in each granola bar? All right, well, let's start with the first part. She will use 17 and 9 tenths ounces of pistachio, 12 and 6 tenths ounces of almonds, 12 and 5 tenths ounces of walnuts, and 12 and 5 tenths ounces of pistachio. So well, you can imagine her taking all these nuts and combining them. And that should give us an idea of what's going on here. So we need to find out how many nuts she is using to make her batch of granola bars in all. So we're going to take the uh, pistachios. We'll just put a P for pistachios, almonds, walnuts, and cashews. And she needs to find the whole amount. We're going to make a second tape diagram because after she makes the entire batch, she's going to do something with it. She's going to divide it into 25 parts. As usual, we're not going to draw all 25. We'll use our ellipsis shortcut. And we now have uh, this total amount of nuts being uh, split evenly among 25 bars. And the amount here is the amount, or the ounces, in uh, nuts in one granola bar. I hope that you are able to figure out Looking at these tape diagrams, they're very useful, and as you can see, we have a two-step problem. I hope this gives you enough help. Problem three is another multi-step problem, so again, we'll give you some help by setting up some tape diagrams. Adam has 16 and 45 hundredths kilograms of flour. He uses 6 and 4 tenths kilograms to make hot cross buns. The remaining flour is exactly enough to make 15 batches of scones. How much flour in kilograms will be in each batch of scones? All right, well, first of all, we have to think about the total amount of flour he has, so I'm going to make a tape diagram that represents that. And this is all the flour, and you can see the number that corresponds with that. And we now have the flour that he uses to make hot cross buns, and again you can insert the value for that. What we have here is what's remaining. What do we do once we find what's remaining? Well, we're going to divide it, or split it, into 15 equal batches. So we'll use our tape diagram to represent 15 equal batches. And what we have here in our brackets is uh, uh, kilograms of flour in one batch of scones.
Problem number four can be very complex, uh, but there's another approach we can use that makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to uh, read the problem, we're going to lay it out, then we're going to do some thinking about how we can find an easier way to do this problem. There are 95th grade students going on a field trip. Each student gives the teacher $9.25 to cover admission to the theater and for lunch. Admission for all the students will cost $315, and each student will get an equal amount to spend on lunch. How much will each 5th grader spend on lunch? Well, uh, your first thought might be to do this. Uh, find out how much money they have in all. And we know that each student pays uh, nine dollars twenty-five cents. We know that there's ninety students. Use our ellipsis. And each one of these units is nine dollars twenty-five cents. And we could multiply that by ninety to find the whole. After we find the whole, we could subtract the amount used for admission, and then the remainder would be divided into 90 parts. A little small, but we can see it. And then we could calculate the amount that each makes, or each gets for their lunch. But there's another way to do this. Let's uh, think about this. We know that each kid gets, or has $9.25 worth of uh, of money that they contributed. What we need to do is figure out how much is used for admission and how much is for lunch. How can we do that? Well, let's take a look at that $3.50. Remember that $3, $3, $3, $315 is divided into 90 parts once again. So if we take that and divide it by 90, we can figure out how much is spent for each student on admission. From there you ought to be able to work the problem out. I'll probably give you more guidance than I should have, but uh, I suspect a lot of people would have been fairly frustrated with this problem without some help. Ben is making math manipulatives to sell. He wants to make at least $450. Each manipulative costs $18 to make. He is selling them for $30 each. What is the minimum number he can sell to reach his goal? Well, we're going to maybe not give you quite as much help as the last time. I'm going to omit the numbers from this anyway. So let's look at one manipulative. We know that the one manipulative okay, sells. What's the sales price? We know that uh, there's a cost to making it. And there is a profit. And when we talk about profit, profit equals money made. Okay, so we're just looking for this profit part. Once we determine the profit, whatever that is, and we'll represent that by P, we have to figure out how many of these he needs to sell. And we don't know how many, but we once we determine the profit, we have something to work with. And of course, how much does he need to make? We'll just put the word needs. Or wants, as he says here. What does he want to make? Uh, if you get a decimal number, think about what that means in terms of how many he needs to sell if he wants to make at least $450.